Hi, I'm Roy from Drone School UK. This is my final summary video now in January 2026 of the CAA changes to the drone code. And this is the drone code going forward. It all started in May 2025 when uh, they published CAP 3105, which was a consulted document uh, which eventually became the drone code. I did a video in May about that uh, document and then I also did a, di a video in September October 2025 which was the result of all of the consultation and the final drone code. Now since that date there has been a few minor tweaks to the document the actual uh, drone code document that is now being published in January 2026. Now the final document has caused a lot of debate on social media on YouTube because there are some ambiguities and it doesn't please everybody. But what I'm going to do in this summary is cut through all of this noise and give you the facts about where you can and can't fly. The first key point is the weight threshold. If the drone is over 100 grams and it has a camera, which most drones have, then you need a flyer ID and an operator ID. Now the flyer ID is in effect linked to the drone code. It is the theory test for the drone code. And when you pass it, what you're actually doing is accepting the actual drone code and saying that you do understand the drone code and you've read it and you've passed a test about it. Therefore, if anything happens and you get it wrong, you can't plead ignorance as a defense. You can't turn around and say, oh, I don't, didn't know what I was doing. I didn't realize what I was doing because you've read the drone code, you've passed the theory test with the flyer ID. That's what it's all about. From an age point of view, if the child is under 13, they can do a flyer ID, but they have to be with the parent when they're doing the ID. If they're 13 to 17, they can go on the website and do it themselves. Uh, it's just to do with the GDP. So any age really can get a flyer ID. But then after the flyer ID, if you buy a drone, you need to get an operator ID, which is a number. And that operator ID, you have to be over the age of 18 to get an operator ID. Finally, with regard to supervision, if the child is under the age of 13, then as you see in this diagram here, the parent needs to be with them when they're flying. But they're between 13 and 17, they can fly the drone unsupervised, but legally the parent is responsible for the drone and the flight. I hope that explains that point. The Florida is free to do and it's valid for five years. Now with the operator ID, that is a paid item and it's currently £11.79, it goes up every year and it's an annual fee that you pay. But you only pay it once and then it covers doesn't matter how many drones you have if you've got one drone or 15 drones you only have one operator id one 11 pound 79 payment but it's only valid for one year and the operator id needs to be attached to the drone either externally or in the battery compartment it doesn't have to be visible but it has to be on the physical drone the next key change is drone class markings Currently, there is a C0 to C6 marking on drones, and they're from the ESA regs. And we've adopted those, and we have a transition period now from January 2026 to January 2028 to transfer across to the UK0 to UK6 markings. So that's quite straightforward. However, the wording has been changed since my last video slightly to relate to the actual drones themselves. The key change is a few small words, but they have a massive uh, knock-on effect. And they are, it, it says at the top, while legacy drone or model aircraft models can continue to be sold, any new model placed on the market, which is the key word, from January 2026 must have a UK class marking. Now that's a change from September, October wording. 
And what this actually means now is that if you buy a Mini 5 Pro, DJI Mini 5 Pro, which is a current drone, or a Air 3S, a current drone, it's actually termed a legacy drone because it's not a new model. Now, if they bought out the Mini 6 Pro in, say, May next year, which they're not going to do, but if they did that, that would be a new model and it would have to have the UK 1 label on it or the UK 0 label for in that particular case. No UK labels will be put on existing DJI drones like the UK for in the UK, for example, like the Mini 5 Pro. So if you go out and buy a new Mini 5 Pro today, it'll have a C0 rating on it. Whereas in October, it was insinuated that any new drones, even the new Mini 5 Pro, if it was brand new, physically new, rather than a new model, would have to have the UK zero rating or a UK label. That is not the case anymore. And that's quite a major, major change. The next question relates to this transition period. I've been out and I bought my DJI Air 3S next month, February 2026. I keep that drone until January the 1st, 2028. Now that transition period has now come to an end and that drone will no longer be able to fly in the A1 category under the current regulations and legislation, which is a bit of a misdemeanor. Now, we were expecting DJI to issue us with a UK1 or allow us to get a UK1 sticker for that drone sometime in the next 22 months. But we cannot guarantee that. So this is a quite a big anomaly that will probably be cleared up in some way, shape or form I, by the, the D, DJI allowing a issue of a sticker or the CAA extending the deadline. But nobody knows. So this is an anomaly at the moment. And there is no solution to this at the moment. The next is the description of airspace has been renamed. A1 is flying over people. A2 is flying near people, minimum separation of 50 metres. And A3 is flying far from people, minimum separation of 150 metres. And when you look at this A1 and start to relate it to the C0 or UK0 or C1 or UK1 uh, drone classifications, this starts to make sense. So the A1, you can fly the C0 and C1 drones up to 900 grams and they can be flown over uninvolved people. Now this is a major change. This A1 category was previously only related to C0 drones or drones under 250 grams. It's now possible to fly a C1 drone in this A1 category and that's the Air 3S, for example, from January the 1st, 2026. And that Air, one, that Air 3S can have, doesn't have to be in a slow speed mode. It can be in normal mode or it can be in sports mode. Then the A2 cl clarifies minimum horizontal distances and, and it's not a bubble of 50 metres. And that's from uninvolved people. And it's a minimum of 50 metres now from a single or a small group of buildings. Now, within that A2 category, there is the upgraded training for the A2 Certificate of Competence, which we do. Now, that had quite a few advantages. One of them has been removed. You, th that was the 250 to 500 gram roll. That's gone as of January the, uh, the 1st, 2026. However, it allows closer flights to uninvolved people for C2 drones. For example, the DJI Mavic 4 Pro, for example. And that's down to 30 meters rather than 50 meters. And if you're in a slow speed mode, it's down to five meters from uninvolved people, which is a major difference. But you need to have the A2 certificate of competency to be able to do that with a C2 drone. And the A3 uh, category stays the same. It's 150 metres from residential, commercial, industrial and recreational areas. This key change relates to night flying. The regulations in October were saying that you needed a strobe light. These have been altered slightly now to say, the CAA say that you need a flashing green light on the drone at all times so that you can see it from the ground. Now, DJI have lights 
already built into most of their drones. For example, let's take the DJI Mini 5 Pro. It has a green flashing lights on the back of the drone, which you can see. Now, one of the issues with the DJI Mini 5 Pro is when the, you film, i.e. set the video going, those green lights go out for the period of time that you're recording. When you're taking a still image, they do the same. Whereas on the bigger drones like the DJI Mavic 4, you can switch those lights on or off. So when you're videoing, those lights can still be flashing. It depends on what you want to do. It's not a good idea having flashing lights working when you're videoing because it puts a tint on the actual video, but that's what it's about. So looking at the debate that's going on about this whole thing, which is lengthy now, you can fly the DJI Mini 5 Pro with the flashing lights. You don't have to have the extra strobe on the top of the drone, but you, it will switch itself off if you video. So it's a catch 22. DJI can upgrade the software so that will work and you can switch it on and off when you're videoing as a, as a, as a toggle switch, but that is not here at the moment. So if you have a Mini 5 Pro and you want to record at night, you will the lights will go off and you will be not complying with the regulations. I hope that makes sense. One obvious problem area is the DJI Neo 2, the latest drone that they've just launched. And at 151 grams, it doesn't come with any form of light. And this will need a flashing light attached to it in the future if you want to fly this at night. There is no way around it, unfortunately. And finally, the biggest change is remote ID. And this is truly the elephant in the room. What they're saying is that all drones over 100 grams with a camera will need some form of remote ID, some form of transmission from the drone. Now, all new drones that have, that have been sold this year, i.e. from January the 1st, 2026 onwards, with a UK label, UK0 or UK6 label, through to UK6 label, will need to have remote ID already working on that drone. But earlier we've learned that all new drones sold in the UK, physical new drones, not new model drones, like the Mini 5 Pro, for example, won't need remote ID until January the 1st, 2028. So let's give you a couple of examples. I bought my Mini 5 Pro in September last year, September 2025. That has got a C0 label on it, and will not need any form of remote ID until January the 1st, 2028. Now, if I go out and buy a new Mini 5 Pro or a Neo 2 or whatever I buy this year, February 2026, March 2026, whatever, it's going to come because it's a legacy model. It's not a new model, as we've just talked earlier then it's going to come with the C0 label, depending on what it is. And that will not re require any form of remote ID until the 1st of January 2028. Now, on the DJI drones, most DJI drones, the remote ID is already built into the firmware and software. So it will be a software upgrade. Some of the very old, the older drones like the Mavic, two or the air two will not have it but if it's running on the dji fly app then most drones on the dji fly app will have a firmware or a software upgrade so older dji drones will need some form of remote id transmitter external to the drone rather than the software upgrade and other drones will have to have some form of transmitting remote ID attached to it, normally adding between 12 and 14 grams to the weight of the drone. Now that could push the drone over the 250 key drone weight. Looking at the remote ID, as I said earlier, you can have one attached to the drone or it can be a software upgrade. Now, so the CAA want a hybrid network. Um, that's a combination of a direct a remote ID and a network ID. 
But the system is expensive and no funding has been achieved or been promised so far. So that won't come in very quickly. Now, it'll be the direct remote ID that's used at first. So looking at that, you'll see the drone will transmit an unencrypted data like the drone unique number, um, location of the controller, telemetry like the speed, the height of the drone, the direction of travel, the distance from the controller, the location of the controller, and that's transmitted locally um, around your drone and can possibly be read by phone apps like Open Drone ID that you see on the screen here. But on average, the broadcast distances will vary probably up to about five kilometers. And the network type of um, ID would collect all that drone data and that could be harvested and be accessed via an, a an API uh, to a third party. But that's a way off. Now, remote ID was implemented in the US in April 2024, but it's for drones over 250 grams. And you can look on the USA FAA website for DJI drones that have their direct remote ID approved. This is normally a software upgrade. Your registration page on the CAA website is already set up for remote ID. If you press the view button on there, it comes up with your remote ID and gives you a remote ID number with a three digit private key. You then go to the DJI Fly app in the safety app tab and hit remote identification. This then brings up a section where you can put your number in from your remote ID on the CAA website. Now to tie everything together, let's look at the areas that haven't changed. The first one is the maximum altitude is still 120 meters, 400 feet. Maximum distance you can fly the drone away from you is 500 meters. There is visual line of sight rules are still the same. There is no flight in a no-fly zone of FRZ unless you've got permission and there's no flights over crowds under any circumstances with any drone. Flying using FPV goggles is still exactly the same. You need a spotter because you're wearing goggles and you can't see the drone. And then the final one is follow me mode. You can fly the drone up to 50 meters away from you when you're in follow me mode. We now covered all of the changes to the drone code for January 2026. Hope that helps. Happy flying. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel or watch the next video in the playlist or the new videos that we've just recently downloaded.